Okay, so 52 Pi do some very nice cooling solutions for Raspberry Pi. And uh, this one has been called overkill in my comments before, but I think it does a great job and, uh, and really helps to keep your Raspberry Pi 5 cool, even when overclocking. Although not all my Pis overclock that well. Sorry about the noise. Uh, it is pouring down with rain at the moment and we've just had some thunder and lightning, so we might get that on video if we're lucky. I mentioned overkill in cooling solutions just now. Well, you'd probably be more likely to call this overkill, uh, especially in the UK. But obviously we can overclock some Raspberry Pis way over the standard clock speeds. And also some people live in a very hot climate and uh, want to play games or want to do more intensive things on a Raspberry Pi. So this might be the thing for them, but also it would be very cool in an arcade build. Uh, it would just look great. Uh, because of all the lights and everything which you'll see in a minute. So before I do that, let's just show you what I mean about uh, some Pis aren't great at overclocking. So this is my 4 gig Raspberry Pi and on this memory card I've got uh, my version of KDE Plasma which runs at 3 gigahertz, which runs fine in my 8 gig Pi. Doesn't in my original, so uh, regular subscribers will know I had a Pi, I don't know, two or three months early uh, a Pi 5 to test and uh, I also bought a 4 gig Pi uh, and also an 8 gig Pi 5 but uh, let's put this memory card into the 4 gig one and I learned something new about uh, multi-touch gestures with Raspberry Pi OS that I didn't know my cat's about to jump oh, what are you doing <laughs> and that's that three fingers up on the trackpad brings up the uh, program menu so you can open and close mm. that anyway let's shut this down and switch memory cards and start that up doesn't like it doesn't even attempt to boot uh, and just to show that it is working if i unplug this and start it up without an sd card in it you can see it's trying to start up so it doesn't like a three gigahertz overclock i don't know what it does like but uh, i'm going to get a pi that does so here's my original that's why i put an o on it and this is the one uh, that i bought on day one and does seem to be really good with overclocking. So let's switch over and let's pop this card in. Pop this in for mouse and keyboard. This is a Dope Splay laptop, which is a laptop without an operating system. If you want to know more about it, I've got a couple of videos on it. And we can see that it's running KDE Plasma. And if I go into terminal and launch NeoFetch, we can see that it's running at three gigahertz. And if we launch P sensor, that will tell us what sort of temperatures we've got at this time. So it's currently 32 degrees, 33 degrees. So let's minimize this and we'll open another terminal, Control Alt T. And somewhere on here, I've got some stress tests. Documents, KDE. Here we go, there's a Sysbench test here. This is all ready to run if you've got my Builder KDE Plasma. Two minute test and it'll max it out. So let's copy that in. And run that. And let's see how high these temperatures get. And if we also launch HTOP as well. So we can see what's going on. So CPU usage 100% and we're up to 47% at the moment. No fans on. So the fans have come on but at a very low speed. It's not very warm in here today. I haven't got the heating on. It's probably about, I don't know, 15 degrees. Okay, so that's finished. Let's run that test again. And that's finished again. We've got up to 55 degrees. I'm going to do it one more time. See the fan speed got up to 1475 RPM. So basically the fan will ramp up as it gets hotter. Okay, so that's finished and we've got to 57 degrees and uh, the fan got up to 1527 RPM. What I'm going to do now is just play a YouTube video for 10 minutes. Okay, so after all that, it still only got to 57 degrees, but let's open the terminal and do one more stress test. We'll leave the, the browser open. Here we go and just do that for two minutes. And you can see my fans are spinning, but no, still not at a super high speed. Again, it is only 15 degrees in here. 
So for testing the beast, first of all I'm going to start by going up to 20 degrees ambient temperature. My heating is on. Now I haven't had instructions yet so I'm going to wing it because it looks pretty self-explanatory. Uh, so I've got a couple of tubes here which obviously take it in and out of the cooler. We've got an aluminium plate on the base. We've got a thermal pad that goes between the aluminium plate and the pie. And we've got a load of heat pads, but I want to use thermal paste instead of heat pads. These are quite thick, but I'm going to try it with thermal paste. And we've got this to be able to pour the water in. So let's take this off. Oh, straight in with the right size. And I was using thermal paste with this one with this copper heat spreader. But I better not mix and match products. Just get rid of the excess first of all. And a bit of cleaning with some isopropyl. Now the CPU is definitely taller than the rest of the components. Um, so it would probably benefit from de-lidding. So taking this part off so uh, it's not covering the main CPU. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it as it comes. And this is completely flat as you can see. So if we were to put it on without doing anything, so it must be this way around, and we can't, <laughs> we can't really see uh, what it's touching. So I'm just going to put some thermal paste on all sorts of bits. There you go, a lot of science went into that bit. Uh, it does look very neat as you can tell. So let's pop this on, and I can feel it on the CPU paste. So it's going to screw through here. It must be like this. Same size Allen key bolts. Oh, I've forgotten the heat spreader to go underneath. So I'm going to go around about here. Try that again. And the last bolt going in. Okay, so that's all done. And you can see on here, ice pump for Pi 5, Seed Studio and 52 Pi with that lovely solid thick bit of copper. And I'm going to wire it in the way they've shown it. So pop these on all the way and this one all the way till it stops. So I've pushed the pipes on and you can see it on the cooler as well. Now you can cut these and you can daisy chain them. So if you were doing a cluster, you could have multiple pies cooled by this system uh, where it's going in and out and basically making a whole circuit where it goes, sends the cold water all the way through the system. Let's pour some water in it. Now that it shouldn't be able to go anywhere. I'm gonna use this one. And this is distilled water, which is what they recommend. Although pouring this isn't going to be much fun. I wonder if I just create a hole at the front and at the back just for airflow. Let's do that as well. And see what happens. You can see it going down through the pipe. I'm going too fast. So I'm going to fill it up to there. But then, uh, when I was speaking to my son, because he's had water cooling on his PC before, uh, is to run it and it will go through the radiator. And here's the adapter, 12 volt, 2 amp, 24 watts. Plug in here. Oh, wow. Okay, so that must have already gone through the radiator. So if I now turn it off. And then I guess I try and get this to be pretty much full. I'm to guess this last bit. Yeah, that looks pretty much at the top. Pop this one back in. Okay, so we're up and running, and uh, it's just looking really cool. I was thinking it'd be uh, interesting if I just turned up to Starbucks or Costa Coffee 
uh, with this sort of setup. Obviously, this looks a bit more untidy because I've got a catcher device. There would be a lot less cabling involved, but uh, yeah, it's really, it's really cool. And it feels weird to see the water go in and above the pie and then go back out again. And if you have a look at the back, you can see just like a car radiator really. And the air is passing through this. So the water is going through this and the air is passing through, cooling it down. So let's go back into screen capture and do some tests. So let's call up P sensor and H top. And let's snap these into place. Just pop that in the corner. And open a terminal and run that test. So we're currently at 32 degrees. It's a lot warmer in here now. The heating is, is cutting in and out, so I know that it's reached its 20 degrees. Okay, so 33 degrees, let's run that again. You might hear the rain has started up in the background. The uh, cooler makes a lovely sort of like a, almost like a water feature. You know when you get those things in garden centers where there's the sort of trickling of water, it's really relaxing. So let's run that again for the third time, still only 33 degrees. So it's definitely doing its job. And then one more test, so it's up to 34 degrees at the moment. Okay, that's another test done. So that's all three and uh, it didn't get above 34 degrees, which is super impressive. Remember, it is five degrees hotter in the house now. I, did, I deliberately turned up the heating to give it more of a test. Still only 20 degrees. Let's do a YouTube test now and let's just run it. I'm probably gonna run it for an hour or so uh, while I have something to eat. This is my longest video at an hour and a half. So we're now one hour in and the temperature has still only got to 36 degrees, which is super impressive by far the most effective cooler I've ever tried on a Pi, but that was to be expected. So thanks very much to Seed Studio and also 52Pi for sending me this to test. It really has been a pleasure to test. Uh, it is such a good cooler. Uh, I know it's big, I know it's uh, very, very overdone, especially for the UK, but if you're in a hotter environment or you have a cluster of Pis, then uh, maybe it's for you. It would also definitely look good on the top of an arcade build. Uh, it just is so impressive. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.